Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I am here with part six of the of season two of the End of Death Canon. This story being called Where Death Lives. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you do not enjoy this video, then you're about to waste a little bit of time. I'm not sure how much time because I haven't because as I never know how much time I'm gonna take on a a particular article within a certain canon. But we will see. Let's get into this. Where death used to live. Notice from the records Earth and Information Security Administration. The following file does not exist. Hmm. Location of interest where death as used to live. Exploration and team. Joyce Michaels. One J one. Joyce Michaels J two. Me J three and Joyce Michaels J four. Well, that's a bit confusing. Anyway, mission parameters. Locate Tony Michaels and return him to his body. Additional information. LOI-348, which is the other name for this place, is a conceptual representation of death. The rules of location of interest 3488 are not well understood. The five systems do not operate in an LOI 3448 as they do in baseline. This means that any and all sensory info could be hallucinatory or metaphorical. Despite the urgent nature of this mission, you have all the time in the world, Joyce. <sighs> Begin log. Okay, we're in. We got tiled floors, wires and lights, and a lot of chairs. And more than a few people magazines? What is this? 2017? J1 unjumps over an unattended counter and starts rifling through papers. No matter, that's what I'm just going to call them because it's easier that way. <sighs> Looks like we have medical records, schedules for surgeries, hospital? Definitely hospital, and this is the waiting room. Were there always organs on the seats? Of course, who else would be reading those magazines? Right, right, right. I think we've searched this room enough. We should split up and down to four corridors to look for Tony. He has to be in the hospital somewhere. I mean, as far as I can tell, the hospital is all there is. The group knows there's a lack of windows in the room. Alright, I'll take this one. Everyone else find your own. J1, J2, and J4 each in these corridors. J3 takes a seat in one of the chairs and begins to rock back and forth. <sighs> this hall looks clean. None of the doors or or the offering rooms are open. How long does this go on for? I swear I can see the end, but I'm not getting clo any closer to it. I tried knocking on one of the doors. No one answered. Just walking and walking. That's all I'm doing. I'm kicking now. Still no response. There is no end. No one can hear me. It's just me and infinity. I found an open door! Where? First door on my right. What is inside? A bed, a body, and a harpy monitor. What is missing? The doctor, the nurse, the will to go on. No one can hear me. The end is not nigh. J3 continues to rock back and forth in the waiting room. Her headphones are set to maximum volume. The body is moving just a little bit. It's breathing quickly. It's a nightmare. J1 approaches the body. It is emaciated and faces away from J1. J1 reaches out to touch the body. Unidentified voice from behind. And J1. Don't wake it. 
Its dreams are much sweeter than the pain of waking. J1, J2, and J4 crumples to the floor. J3 stands and vaults on the corridor of the waiting room. Two of the hallways from earlier are no longer present. She stops running up to 14 minutes in front of an open door. Just beyond the opening of the door is a garden full of daisies. A man is kneeling next to one of the flowers, slowly stroking it. Beside him is, is a mannequin shaped like the body of J1. T Tony? The man looks up. <clears throat> I was wondering when you get here. Come on, I have a garden here. It'd be a shame if you didn't get to see it. Joyce takes a step into the garden and then pauses. Tony flashes her a brief, brief smile. She joins him and on a walk to the garden. Anything new? They told me you were dead. Tony swallows. I mean, they're only half wrong. <coughs> I've been taking care of Dad for a lot of the time. How's he doing? Delusional, damaged, but still not dead. Tony stops walking. Joyce stops as well. After a moment, Tony embraces Joyce. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was thinking or doing. I'm just sorry for all of this. Joyce hugs Tony back. I know, I know. But you can save your apologies for a little later. We'll get you out, and you can apologize to Dad and Emily yourself. We're getting you out of here. Al? Yeah, we have a whole plan out and, out and put in place. You're going to... Tony releases Joyce Ace and takes a few steps back. He gives her a confused look. Wait. No. No? No, um... I'm not leaving. What do you mean you're not leaving? I need to be here. I, I screw things up, so I need to fix them. Fix it? You freaking shot that! You can't unshoot that! That little girl or skeleton or whatever the freak that was is gone. And I'm here, and I'm figuring it out. You... Tony takes Joyce by the hand and leads her down the path. Come on, I've gone start right on, on something. Let me show you. Show me death? Yes, well, almost. Tony continues down the hospital corridor, stopping in front of a room. There is a woman lying still in the hospital bed with her eyes closed. A heartbeat monitor shows a flat line. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It's a corpse, Joyce. She's dead. I found her bones and I buried them. Tony pulls a red garden hoe from his back park bucket. I did with this, and my bare hands. Now she's pushing up daisies. You're... you're killing people? I mean, I was. Not so much anymore. For some reason, the dang thing stopped working. Stopped working? Yeah. It's a garden hoe tote, Oni. I don't know how it works. It just feels wrong now. Like they're never ready yet. I... I don't get it. I'm not going to leave. If no one's here, how can anyone be put to rest? Joyce stares at the body for a moment before turning around and storming back to the, into the garden. Joyce, wait! To herself. Tony's supposed to come back with me. He's supposed to come home. Home. I want to go home. Joyce is stopped in her tracks as she comes across J2, J4, and the mannequin of J1. Do you want to go home? What about Tony? What about the ma asses?
But but I'm not supposed to be here. Neither of us are. This place isn't for us. Then what about the girl before you? Or the daisies? Or the bugs? George's feet are now surrounded by burnt insect corpses. Wasn't the girl always here? I don't know. Was she? Of course she was. Death was always around. Was it? Stop asking me! Joyce drops to her knees, crushing the insect corpses on the ground. J1, J2, and J4 continue talking, but no words can be made out. The world begins to spin, and spin. Excuse me, and spin. Miss, excuse me, and spin. Miss! Joyce looks up. She's now in a room made of compact dirt. There's no visible light source, despite the room being illuminated. And forever sounds a man-sized teddy bear. Are you okay? Joyce blinks. What is going on? Where am I? There, there. You've obviously been having a rough time. Where's Tony? Or the garden? Or the hospital? It's all here. They're just taking a, a break. But they're not gone. What is that? A teddy bear smiles and walks to the wall, to the wall where it sits so its back is propped up. It pats the ground next to it where Joyce takes a seat. You know, Tony asks that question a lot. I'm not really any sort of authority on it all, being just a teddy bear, but after talking back and forth about death with him for a while, I think I have an answer. Joyce rests her head against the shoulder of the teddy bear and closes her eyes. Death is nothing special. It's just a bookend. Life's a lot like a story, you see. It has an abrupt beginning, a long middle, and an equally abrupt end. But pretty much every story has to come to some sort of end. If you don't finish a the story, then it just goes on and on. It spirals out of control and loses all focus. Now some stories could use extra uh, pages. While brevity is the soul of wit, not every story needs to be particularly sharp. Longevity it gives opportunity to explore or paths of the story that weren't around. But again, every story needs an ending. And that's all death really is. It's turning the final page, putting in the final period. It's putting down the pen. Then what is this place? This is a place that enforces deadlines for manuscripts. It appears our communications are down, so the authors all think they have all the time in the world. Nothing is more chaotic than an author let off the leash. Troy stresses against the taper for a little lo while longer. That's a nice way to think about it, even if it doesn't and really answer the question. Sometimes accuracy isn't the most important part of the answer. This place never really made sense in the first place. Sometimes things are never supposed to make sense. You know what they what we call those things? What? Anomalies. Doris opens her eyes. She's back in the garden, resting her head on Tony's lap. You sleep well? Not particularly. Well, are you staying around here, or are you going in, in to go back home? I'm. I'm not entirely sure. That's fine. I don't think either of us are in much of a rush. If you're going to stick around for a bit, I could use your help. My help? Yeah, you were always the smartest one of us, and I... I want to fix things. I don't know if I can, but I want to try, dang it. I... I don't know. I want to help Dad. Joyce nods and then sits up. I can try, I guess. You said something about your help not work? <laughs> Farming hell. Working? Can you describe that a little more?
Well, I mean, okay, it's kind of confusing to me, I guess. Sometimes I can sort of just feel it pull me toward the bones. I didn't bear the bones, and in a few days, and then in a few days, Daisy grows. So it's like you can feel when someone is dying. Yeah, almost as if I'm killing them myself. Killing them yourself? Joyce? Yeah, the knife that Dad gave you, right? Yeah, I carried around pretty much. Yeah, I carried around pretty much everywhere after I joined the Foundation. Why do you ask? Mm hmm. I. I might have an idea. Can you help me with maybe talking to Emily? Of course. Let's see if we can help Dad. Then I'm busting you out of here. End log. Red right hand after action report. Upon raiding the CIA facility, he found foundation issued equipment and also computers linked to US SCIP net. His place is must have either defected or was raided and then was swiftly deleted from the system. There was ample evidence that the facility had been evacuated no more than six hours prior to our arrival. Luckily, by examining the session information on the machine, we have determined that two of the individuals who escaped are personal are foundation personnel. Specifically, Dr. Emily Young and Dr. Jared Halberg. Additionally, we discovered a large machine in the back room which appears to have been the, the source of any anomalous activity. Inside the machine lay one cadaver and one individual outpay with an AR video of services mechanical exoskeleton. Additionally, we recovered the following report from the machine. SCP-3448, day 40,095 imaging results. From 8.44 a.m. to 8.52 a.m. Four identical women awaken in the hospital. They speak for a while before going down separate hallways, except for one who remains in the waiting room and puts on headphones. 10.22 to 10.56 a.m. Women to women and walks the man down a path in a garden, surrounded by daisies. 11.46 to 12.01 11.46 a.m. to 12.01 p.m. Static. 12.01 p.m. to 12. Of 37 and p.m. One speaks to the teddy bear in the room. The teddy bear does not seem to respond to the woman. 2.37 p.m. to 2.46 p.m. The woman and the man and are motioning to a garden hoe at a knife. When the woman brings them close together, the hoe appears to melt into the knife. 3.26 to 3.31 p.m. The woman and the man shout at each other, each occasionally motioning into a teddy bear laying on the ground. 3.51 to 4.07 p.m. The woman is now wearing a stethoscope, but a man examines. 4.37 to 6.03 p.m. Static. 7.03 to 7.30 p.m. The woman sitting in front of the hospital bed is staring at a patient. The patient is an elderly man and rests his head on one pillow while clutching the other close to his chest. Notably, the cadaver within the machine and the woman outfitted with the Butio exoskeleton were identical to individuals shown in any images displayed by a machine, except the man did not possess a knife or a garden hoe, and the woman did not possess a, a stethoscope or headphones. To ensure that at this facility could not be used eyes for malicious purposes, in the future the facility was raised under the purpose of the building not being up to any health standards. Scans of the building show that this did not re result in the termination of either cadaver found within the building, which is to be expected. Command was, uh, was immediately notified of the, the identity of the two defectors and dispatched MTF IOTA 10 to recover these uh, individuals. It looks like that is the end of anything that Joyce and Tony can do within a, this perpetual inability to a die state that most likely will lead to suffering for all humanity. And every creature that should be dead at a certain age and cannot die at that age anymore. 
it got really philosophical and I actually kind of liked what the bear said about, about what death and life really are. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't enjoy this video, then you wasted 20 and a half minutes listening to me talk about, about that. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!